Um, Mr. Brooks, you just interrupted me within a minute of us starting this case here today. I'm asking you to respectfully not interrupt me. That's the second time, so I can go through the list of things that I need to get through this morning. 40.01 sub 1 sub A, 939.50 sub 3 sub A, and 939.63 sub 1 sub B of the Wisconsin statutes. Okay. Thank you, sir. I don't have any other questions. All right, sir. Mr. Brooks, do you have any questions for this witness? Yes, I do. And I object to being called that name for the record. Ralph E. Brooks, uh, on or about Sunday, November 21 of 2021, on Main Street in the city of Waukesha, Waukesha County, Wisconsin, did recklessly endanger the safety of Maura Gilchrist under circumstances which show utter disregard for human life and while using a dangerous weapon, contrary to section 941.30. That, that, that's fair, but being an officer of the law, you're right there. I muted him just so I could ask this question. I'll be right with you, Captain. Um, Mr. Brooks, do you have a legal basis to object to those preliminary jury instructions? I'm unmuting you. Shirt, no shirt, objection, no objection, y'all. It does not matter which way you roll the dice. The clownery of this case is off the charts. Hello, Silva Squad, and welcome back to the damn sofa. That is the sofa behind me. Mr. Roscoe P. Coltrane, the donkey, is off in the bed sleeping right now, but we have decided to name the bear Roscoe P. Coltrane as well. So he is here with us. And my name is Paul. So today we are going to be reviewing the Daryl Brooks trial. Y'all, this is a hot mess express, okay? Now, you're going to be seeing a few different videos come out from me about this. This is going to be the first, but they're actually going to kind of be out of order. So I apologize. So that being said, it really doesn't matter what part of the trial you look at. It is absolutely a you know what show okay so the way it's going to work over here at this channel is this i'm going to put some clips up and we're going to talk about them and what we're focusing in on today is some of his tactics i guess you could call and how he questions witnesses and then you can't really in my opinion at this point do a daryl video without talking about the conversations the discussions between he and the very patient judge. Now, before we jump in, I do want to say thank you to everybody who makes this channel possible. It would not be here without you. I thank you from the bottom of my heart and the sofa cushions. Now, also, before we get started, just to give some context, we are talking about the Daryl Brooks trial. This is the Waukesha Parade tragedy. He mowed down numerous innocent people, took several lives, injured countless others. So this happened about a year ago, and now he is up in, in his trial, and he has decided to defend himself. As we see most of the time, these cases where the defendants try to defend themselves, it doesn't go so well. This one takes the cake, okay? I don't think I've seen a You Know What show like this in a very a long time it's currently going on probably at the time that you're seeing this video it's currently still hasn't come to a conclusion yet it is one of those where you can just tune in at any point and your mouth will be on the ground so yeah there's that so go ahead and jump into it if you want to go watch the trial and come on back to the sofa when you want to hear some you know commentary and dish on it now first let's hear a little bit of question a little bit of you know back and forth with an officer as well as daryl the ambulance you get you shortly these three uh injured individuals you spoke to would you describe them all as being about teenage uh years objection overruled he may answer he's at the ground your honor overruled um, he may answer so he's going to answer to the question to yes. the prosecution table or to the jury i'm not sure he's looking at them answering the questions but they're not answering the question asking the questions you may answer the question sir you know the judge is just like is he trolling us or what okay so much of the stuff that comes out of his mouth you're just like what is he for real 
So he's upset that the or objecting, I should say, that the officer is answering the questions to the jury. Now, if I don't want to say like if you're trained or a professional or whatever, but oftentimes people are coached. It is just proper etiquette that you look at the jury. You're talking to them. It builds a rapport. Therefore, they are the ones who are the most important person to hear this in the courtroom, right? So he is addressing the jury when he does this. Obviously, this doesn't go over well with the defendant. I uh, notice, uh, Officer Phillips, you are in uh, uniform this afternoon. Were you scheduled to work today? Yes. So it would be fair to say that um, you would be on duty as of now if you weren't giving testimony in this matter. I would be on duty right now, yes. So it will also be fair to ask um, if it would be fair to say that you giving testimony right now, you're still getting paid for it? I am currently employed by the city of Waukesha Police Department on a working patrol shift on a normal shift for myself, yes. So at a different part in the trial during one of his epic rants, the state responded and they basically went down this path of, you know what, he's just using notes from other lawyers that have worked on his case and basically going through that to form his arguments and adding his nonsense onto it and so on and so forth. Okay, which I 100% agree with, right? So the argument that he's trying to form for this officer, which is essentially that he is paid for testimony, right? Now, clearly this is different than your usual paid for testimony. The officer is, you know, he's a cop, he's on duty, right? It's part of his job description, right? You got to testify on these things. So he's just fulfilling his job, right? It's not like he's charging thousands of dollars on the side to come and do this. So... It's kind of a moot point as far as I'm concerned, right? But this just gives that energy that that's the direction he's going in. But another thing that I find comical about Daryl is he tries to sell these arguments, but they don't come off as like confident or anything like that. Now, most of them, they're so off in left field, it doesn't even make sense, right? So let's continue to watch this interaction with this officer because it just gets cringy, but also pay attention to the officer because you can just see how much Daryl bothers, not just him, but anyone he deals with. It's like all they can do not to just spit in his face. So with that, would it be fair to say that you are getting paid right now as we speak? Yes, I'm getting paid right now. By whom? Objection, relevance. Sustain, next question. Um, were you subpoenaed by the plaintiff in this matter? Oh my God, we're going down that damn street of the plaintiff. Now, if you've been following this, you'll know that Daryl has tried to make this huge argument that there is technically no plaintiff, that you know the plaintiff has to be a person, and that there's no one in the courtroom that can you know make a claim against him, and therefore throw the case out, and all this stuff, just crazy stuff, right? And so this is one of the things that I think you also see in the courtroom is that some of the stuff that he comes up with is almost this cringy like kind of a situation where it's almost like people are embarrassed for him is what I'm getting at. And so when this part comes up where he's starting to talk about the plaintiff, the cop, I'm like, oh my God, the repetitiveness of his arguments is absolutely exhausting. I am sure the judge goes home every night and it's like, oh my God, will the end of this ever come? Can you rephrase the question? Were you subpoenaed to testify here today by the plaintiff? Can you explain it in another way? I was, that was pretty clear. Were you subpoenaed to testify by the plaintiff in this matter? I was subpoenaed by the Waukesha County Prosecution's Office to testify in this matter. And is, can you say that again just for the record? I was subpoenaed by the Waukesha County Prosecution's Office in this matter. Is the Waukesha County Prosecution's Office the plaintiff in this matter? Objection, irrelevant, sustained. 
I mean, again, he's not going to let that argument go. He will fight it to the end. The same as the whole thing with his name that we will see here momentarily. And that we saw in the little opening clips and whatnot. I mean, the whole thing, he just keeps going back over and back over and back over and back over. Now, again, in some of the videos that I've made in this one, I'll say it again. You know, I would argue that I, I do not believe that he thinks he's going to go home or any of this kind of stuff. These claims and these belief systems that he's trying to make that he, you know, the sovereign citizen and he's outside the law and all this kind of stuff. I mean, I do think that I, I would hope at least that he is with it enough to realize that he, you know, the, the, the evidence is pretty big in this case, right? He ain't going out. Okay, I mean, I hate to sound like that, but it is what it is. He doesn't need to be in the streets. This is a very dangerous man, right? So, Oftentimes, I think and feel when we see these cases where the defendants represent themselves is it's a last-ditch effort to have the last word, to victimize victims even one last time, to, you know, lash out at, you know, the authority figures, this kind of thing. And I think we see that in this case. Now, clearly, he's been able to... There was a little case file and pick out notes that other people have done, just like the prosecution said about him. And so he's able to kind of skim the surface of this and try to make an argument but there's just there's there's nothing beneath it classic narcissism here this is what's so psychologically entertaining about these just crazy narcissists that get up here and do this they're so convincing know everything and can do everything better they are completely immune to the fact that they are making absolute asses out of themselves do you know of any plaintiff in this matter objection irrelevant Sustained. Have you ever seen the plaintiff in this matter? Objection, irrelevant. Have you ever talked Sustained. to the, Have you ever talked to the plaintiff in this matter? Objection, irrelevant. Sustained. Um, why are you continuing to look at uh, parties that are not asking the questions? Objection, argumentative. Sustained. I mean, my God, it's like a tennis match. It is like a tennis match. I mean, he throws just nonsense out there and just goes back to the same stuff. Why are you looking at them? And I often wonder, I'm like, have these people never watched a court case? I mean, it's just, you know, it, it, the ignorance of the law is just astounding to me. You know, because on just basic things and I'm just like, okay, unless he just wants to be argumentative, which I do think is part of that, right? I just think that he wants to cause drama. He wants to be mischievous. He wants to do this. He wants to cause a scene, right? It's any attention is good attention, stalling, delaying proving a point, all of these things are on full display with this man. Now, let's watch him question a gentleman who was at the parade with his daughter, an off-duty officer. Buckle your seatbelts up, because this is another frustrating one. And now he was going to take off and run. And being, a, uh, being in law enforcement, why would you not investigate that if you heard something crash? Why, being being an officer of the law, why would you not investigate that if you heard that? I was with my daughter, and I would in no way put her in harm's way. Well, I I would think it would be fair to say that you can't handle yourself. You you're obviously a law uh, uh, an officer of the law. You're trained to be able to handle yourself. Would it be fair to say that you could have? Invest at least investigated the sound that you heard that sound like a crash at least objection grounds S sustained it's also a compound question please rephrase so all these thoughts maybe it was just a drunk driver and they're gonna they're gonna run anyway and all these thoughts and that never piqued your interest to investigate sometimes being a good witness is the best thing to do. That's why I called 911 to report it immediately. Now notice Daryl up there standing, you know, his arms crossed. Well, being an officer of the law, and again, it just, oh, it just makes me sick to my stomach, to be honest. A couple of things about this clip. First of all, Daryl is gaslighting the cop, trying to play the whole thing off. Like, well, why wouldn't you investigate it? And why wouldn't you do this? And we'll get deeper into this and just see the like circular thing that goes on here. And this is a, a pattern that Daryl does with his questioning and whatnot, is just these circular arguments that usually bite him in the ass, to be honest. A couple of things again. 
okay, when the officer was like, I would never put my daughter in harm's way, one thing that's very sobering to me about this situation is you're seeing these people talk to him who were there, who he victimized, or who were witness to it. This horrible sounds, horrible images, horrible memories in their mind. This is a man who ran his car through a Christmas parade, for God's sakes, and ran innocent people and children down. I mean, this is absolutely horrible, right? So when you hear this man say, like, I would never put my daughter in harm's way, Daryl has no concept of that, right? It's like you're hearing people who he could never even try and be like or mimic because he would do that he does put others in harm way he does take life away from you know here or whatever you want to say so you can see also with this officer i think some of the the movements the head you know trying to do the thing the same as the gentleman before where you can see just this level of like frustration anger that kind of a thing and just almost this level like what how how are we here the audacity of this man to get up here and say some of the things and talk to people the way that he is after he has done what he has done it blows my mind well you also stated to be fair that you didn't investigate with the crash so how was it any way to know what you were witnessing if you didn't investigate it because I heard a crash and I saw the driver run. So in my mind, I assumed that was a hit and run crash. Yeah, it's almost like you add two and two and you get four or something crazy like that. Now let's watch a little bit of testimony where honestly, this next bit we're gonna watch, I felt like if these two dudes were by themselves, there was gonna be a fight, right? If there was gonna be a scenario where the guards had to tell the witness like, come on now, like it ain't worth it. It was gonna be this one. Do you recall the description that you gave at that time? I do. Well, my best best of my knowledge was that uh, you were either black, Latino, who's you, or mixed. Who's you? Well, you have to let him answer the question first before you interrupt him with another one. Go ahead with the description you provided that night. I said that the individual was either black, mixed, or Latino. So it would be fair to say you didn't know at the time. I was giving a general description. So it would be fair to say that you weren't sure. I was positive that I was positive it was you. Who is you? You. I'm looking at you. Now this is one of the big things in this whole trial that's like the biggest head scratcher for me is the fact that he is questioning in depth these people who literally had like face-to-face -face interactions with this man almost, right? Who are literally getting up there and talking in the sense of, it was you. And he's like, it was you. Wait to get you. I was looking at you and it happened. You know, kind of a thing. Now, this is a scenario where Daryl's in his backyard. He was much closer than they are even now, right? And so, but this has happened with other officers that are up there where they're, you know, describing him like, oh, well, your hair was shorter when you were driving, or your hair was longer when you were behind the wheel of the car, but that was you. And again, it's just like, oh my God, bro, like, this is not going the way you're wanting it to, which leads me also into the whole argument of, I... <sighs> I think he just wants to get his last words in because honestly, if we were able to get a snapshot into his mind, would God help us if we really were to see like, does he really think he's going to get out of this or not? If he truly believed he was going to get out of it, it would be grounds in my mind for insanity. There ain't no way. The evidence, it's just, it's too great, right? So there's that. Let's continue. And how did you come to that conclusion, the, the you conclusion? I'm looking at you. How did, you come, how did you come to that conclusion? Did you, what conclusion? Can, you, can you restate the question? You're saying, you're saying that you gave an, a description on the non-emergency phone line, correct? It was on a non-emergency line. So it would be fair to say at that time, you had no name or knowledge of who uh, the person was in your backyard. Would that be fair to say? I had no idea who you were. And so how can you say who, the, how can you say you then if you had no idea? 
I'm looking at you, you're the guy. And how did you come to that conclusion? Uh, where you, you and I were standing in the same yard looking at each other. So, is it possible you saw something on the news? No, I had no idea who you were. <sighs> I mean, y'all, honestly, we might need to raise a honey bun fund for the dudes that he's incarcerated with. Imagine being in this man's cell or unit or whatever, okay? Like, honestly, if they were looking for some form of, like, ultimate punishment besides solitary confinement, they could make him room, whoever, room with Daryl. You know he doesn't shut up. Like, non-stop talking, and it's all BS. Now, back to this gentleman's testimony. You see how he's getting frustrated. Now, this is just in your everyday sense. This is not somebody who's used to testifying and doing all this kind of stuff. So, to me, he's having more of a reaction like that I would expect like me or somebody to have of you know more easily getting worked up right because you can tell like he's PO'd right and I would be too I mean I, I'm PO'd watching I'm not even like I wasn't there right I don't have any skin in the game you know what I'm saying so it, it's such a vile heinous crime and when you're listening to him questioning him it's almost also like the like the way he's trying to question him with this assumption that everybody's stupid you know and it's just like dude you're standing right across from him in his yard okay it was you like the video evidence the whole nine yards it's just it's too overwhelming now the whole argument of oh people saw this on social media and tv and they try to do this and try to do that i mean it's the ring camera you name it all the evidence in this it just it ain't looking good for daryl and again he just keeps going down farther the rabbit hole and getting these witnesses to just continually confirm it was you i know it was you it was you I would love to know what the jury's thinking. I would love to see the looks on their faces. Interesting. Do you recall giving a description of approximately 5 feet 9 and 160 pounds? I, it, it, yeah, something like that. Something like that, or would that be accurate? I didn't have a tape measure out. It was just a guesstimate. Would it be fair to say that since you keep identifying me as you, would it be fair to say that I'm not 5'9 nor 160 pounds? Do you have your shoes on or off right now? Would it be fair to say that I'm not 5'9 and 160 pounds? If you take your shoes off and... The theatrics that Daryl tries to also offer of like, interesting. Would it be fair to say, and then the standing up, would it be fair to say that I'm not 5'9 and 160 pounds and all this? I mean, ballsy. I mean, really trying to convince everyone they're like, no, this is a mistaken identity situation. And that's what just kind of blows my mind, which is like, what's the point? Like, you, it's almost delusional. It is delusional. There is no almost to it. It is delusional. And again, this guy keeps his cool pretty good. So let's watch the the finale, if you will. Step out of them. They could have a better... No, I'm not going to have them do that, but if you're able to answer the question, uh, do you agree? I'd have to be standing next to him. That's what I made my judgment from. We were about two does feet it, from each other. Does it look like I'm five foot nine? I don't know. We were a lot closer. Does it look like I'm 160 pounds? Imagine, I mean, they want to do this, but imagine if they were like, okay, go stand next to him. Y'all, there would be a scrap. Okay, there would be a big old brawl over that, right? But again, Daryl is just going to lie. Mm -mm, he is not going to hear any different. Now, let's move on to a few clips of the interactions with the judge. Now, again, y'all, you can basically tune into this anytime. This woman, my hat goes off to her. Y'all, she has done her eyes. She is crossing her teeth. She is so utterly patient. Okay, I would have changed careers. I would have, I would have taken my robot. I would have been like, do y'all got some job openings, like a receptionist? Something <laughs> like that. I'm changing my life goals up in here. I can't come into this mess another day. I'll answer the phones. I'll work, you know, behind that little secret door they got up in there. You know, but I, I can't be doing all this. 
One last time, Mr. Brooks, do you have a position on can the I, state's Can I go proposed? over the document, please? Can I do that, Your Honor? Respectfully, for the record, may I do that? Now, the for the record situation is just, it's almost com. it is comical at this point. Now, in another video, which I actually have another video coming out, it's called For the Record, which focuses just in, on his legal terms. So, that one's going to be coming out after this one. But again, he has latched onto this. And the judge goes off on this other thing where she explains to him, like, what for the, you know, what on the record means and for the record and all this. But he says this, y'all. I mean, oh my God, it is exhausting how many times this man says for the record. Just, just roll the tape, y'all. You seem like the same, the same thing that was there yesterday. It's not. There are some changes. What, what changes? Reference it's, it's to the same. It's the same document. That was, reference was accepted to for value, the returned for value yesterday. The same document. It's not the same. The changes were put on the record verbally by the state. Um, it's taking out reference to Sally Port of the Waukesha County Jail, um, referring to it simply as a garage attached to the Waukesha County Courthouse. Those would be in the first two paragraphs. I believe the rest is the same. So it was a couple words changed. That's my understanding. So it's the same document. Let me know when you're finished reviewing it and I don't have I don't have to review the same document that was reviewed yesterday, except the value and return for value yesterday. All right, then let me ask you this, sir. Do you have a position on the proposed instruction from the state. It's essentially the same document. We needed to. What, what was the significance of the change? What, what's the significance? Garage, Sally Port. What, what is what is the relevancy of what it's called? Okay, yeah. Now I'm not gonna lie. During this clip, when they were doing all this type of stuff, before he even said that, my thought was, so it's the same document. <laughs> I was like thinking the same thing, you know, but in all, you know, legal stuff, I get it. They have to dot their I's and cross their T's and whatever it was in reference and the state will speak up after this and, you know, let them know like, look, we changed the name of the Sally Port because people could recognize that as being, you know, the jail and we wanted to call it garage. So they're trying to help him out and the state has been very gracious along the way with helping out and doing this kind of stuff because everybody wants to see a strong conviction. Everybody wants to be able to see this man appeal this they want to do everything they can to help just you know put him away under the jail if you will but some of his reactions like this where he's just like really i mean two words i don't need to look at it what do we need to change this for you know it's just that level of his exhaustion where he just wears him out with it because you know like all the seriousness the way a court is right the dotting the i's the crossing the t's the make sure this is this we have to have this meeting over this one word that's changed has to be completely boring to him, right? Especially someone who's just needing things to be explosive and, you know, noisy and drama and all this. And this is just, it's a snooze fest. Statements made by the parties or the lawyers as those are not evidence. So I'm warning you, do not interrupt again. When, if this jury comes back or when they come back and you do that, uh, then uh, you will be removed and you will forfeit your right to be present for the examination of this witness. Let's bring the jury back in. Well, well you might as well remove me then because you, what you're doing is, is, is not fair. I can't even rebut what you're saying. I didn't interrupt you. I let you make your incorrect record. I can't even rebut. <laughs> the words that he comes up with also are just comical. I let you make your incorrect record. <laughs> I mean, this stuff, he's a hundred percent no respect for the, the, the area that he's in, which is almost what adds this number one, the shock to it, because we're used to seeing, you know, the certain decorum in the courtrooms, right? And then you have this defendant up there who just doesn't follow any of that, has no respect for himself, first and foremost, for his victims, their survivors, their surviving family members, and then the courtroom that he's in, right? I mean, he doesn't care about these people at all. He's wanting to prove a point, get the last. I mean, listen to the way he talks to the judge, and she is super patient with him. Now, God knows 
what she has had to send him out of the damn courtroom numerous times because he just he cannot shut up it is not within him to just shut up up at times. Mr. Brooks, I'm bringing the jury out and we're continuing. We're going to get through these witnesses. Okay? And I'm not stopping you through from doing that. Through your behavior, it. you're not going to delay these you, proceedings. Today. I'm not trying we're to delay continue. the proceedings. So I wish you would stop being incorrect on the record and saying what I'm trying to do if you don't know that. You don't Mr. know Brooks, what I'm, I'm trying to do. I'm bringing the jury out. I'm not going to argue with you. Then, so. then don't. Because I'm not arguing with you either. I'm stating facts. You're raising your voice. It's because very I'm, I'm, I'm tired of you always making a record. At me. You're making a record of me trying to look bad. I know what you're trying to do. It's not going to work. I'm making a record of what's accurately. You're being making done a in record of problem. incorrect statements. That's what you're doing. You're not making a record of Mr. not Rose, being. I'm advising you to be quiet because the jury's coming back. You're out. advising me to be quiet. Is you telling I'm me to be quiet? You to be respectful when the jury. Are you comes telling out. me to be quiet or are you asking me? I'm asking you and advising okay. you. Okay, thank you for correcting that, because don't nobody tell me what to do. I don't tell nobody else what to do. Can you imagine talking to the judge like that? Can you imagine talking to most people like that? The audacity to sit there, don't tell me what to do. This is somebody who has mowed down, and I cannot get over that fact, allegedly at this point. This is somebody who has mowed down, allegedly, a bunch of innocent people at a Christmas parade and they have the balls to talk to authority like this. Absolutely unimaginable. There's no words for it. I'd appreciate we're all it. We're all the dots in here. I've never told you to sir. do anything at all. Sir, I'd appreciate if your tone of voice would change. I would appreciate if you would ask me. I'm a grown man with grown kids. Don't nobody ain't nobody gonna talk to me like that. Nobody. I don't have a problem with doing what you ask me to do, not tell me. Just like when I ask you about subject matter jurisdiction that you have yet to prove on the record, but somehow I'm being intentionally disruptive. Of, uh, come on, man, stop. Just stop it. Jury's coming out. All right for the jury. Not going to work. They had to bring up that subject subject matter jurisdiction. My God, if you've been following this, y'all, I mean, that is one of the first. I, I just, I cannot with that anymore. He has said that so many times. He has gone on and on and on about that. It's ridiculous. Now, the other thing about this clip that stuck out to me that just sent shiver down my spine. And he's like, I'm a grown ass man with grown ass children. And I'm like, this poor children. God only knows what they suffered through their whole lives. Imagine a day in the life with this man having some form of authority over you as a father. Imagine being, you know how when you're young and you look at your parents like that, like they're the end all be all, like they're your parents, they know everything, they know right and wrong. Imagine that is your example of it. I, I can't. I can't. I just, I can't. <laughs> it's just shocking. And again, the judge just sitting there biting her tongue, biting her tongue, because you know they have to be thinking the same things. You know, when you see someone like this, who, again, they have no respect for themselves, no respect for the victims, no respect for society, nothing, unhinged. And then they get in this environment like this, all the way to this situation, right? Where he's up here defending himself, if you want to call it that, and just coming to this courtroom with this nonsense, it's just a continuous slap in the victim's face. Now, if you want to watch me talk about another defendant who didn't represent herself, but who got up on the stand and literally talked everyone to death and herself into prison, then go ahead and click this next video and be sure to subscribe to catch my other videos coming out soon on the Daryl Brooks case. Thank you very much. I'll talk to you soon.